Hi everyone, I'm here with Bernie Mayer of the Werner Institute, a longtime researcher and teacher and practitioner of negotiation and dispute resolution. Um, Bernie, uh, I'd like to speak with you about um, these two very, very common conflict and negotiation styles um, that are very often discussed in the literature as like the major styles that people have of competition and cooperation. Um, and as we progress in this unit from thinking about uh, these as being styles that we have, kind of natural orientations we have, and start thinking about these two as choices we can make. Do we want to act competitively? Do we want to act cooperatively? Um, I'd like to hear your, your thoughts first on the orientation issue, and then later, how can we start making choices about these things? You know, in, in order for me to really get my hands around cooperation and competition, I actually have to take a step back and thinking of it as a style. Yeah. And thinking about it as a structural challenge in negotiation. <clears throat> because in a negotiation, you're usually trying to do two things. You're trying to figure out how you can meet each other and come to an agreement that, that this works for both of us. And you're also thinking about how do I get what I want. And but those are both realities. Mm -hmm. You know, one way of simply thinking about it is that you're always trying to divide up the pie and expand the pie at the yeah. same time. And cooperation is a style that is more oriented towards, oh, let's expand the pie. Let's figure out if there's a win-win solution. Mm -hmm. And co and competition is more well, you know, there's a you know, little amount of money in there. I, you know, I'm, I want to get the most I can out of this, or the highest uh, pay raise I can, or whatever, from a limited pot. Now, what's, what, what I think we sometimes think about is that we can choose between those two. Mm -hmm. And we can go in there, be real hard-nosed negotiators, and really be realize this is all about grabbing the biggest piece of, of, of the pie for myself. That's the competitive orientation. Or, in fact, or that we can go up there, we can work together, and by working together we can be creative and we can find a solution that works for each of us. And, and, and the reality is in negotiation, they're, they're both present. Yeah. And so, to think about it as a style, it's you know, what are we most comfortable with? Yeah. It gets right back to, to avoidance and, and engagement, in a sense. And, and so that, that's how I think about it. Now, I, 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 because, if I understand you correctly, you're saying that uh, that part of our decision of which part of this negotiation am I going to avoid and which part of it am I going to engage with uh, leads into the question of how exactly am I engaging in this negotiation. So sometimes I'm acting uh, competitively in order to engage and cooperatively in order to avoid and those, these things. Right. Uh -huh. And it's just not that simple. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, in order to be an effectively create a cooperative framework, and there's lots of evidence for this, we have to be willing at some point to consequent non-cooperative behavior, yeah. whether we're dealing with international negotiations or interpersonal negotiations. On the other hand, if our, if our total sense is that we're all about being tough and making people do what we want, we're going to have a pretty hard road to hoe, even if we have lots and lots of power. Yeah. So you need to cooperate in order to get a larger share of the pie. You need to um, you need to compete in order to enlarge the pie. It's just not that simple. Uh -huh. So I have often said, maybe this old, I don't believe the theme song for our field should be, come on people now, smile on your brother, everybody get yeah. together, got to love one another right now. But on the other hand, it also should not be, I can't get no satisfaction. So I invite people to come up with a good theme song. Uh -huh. it, it, it really is how you integrate the two. Huh. So how do you create an atmosphere in which we can work together to both enlarge that pie as best as we possibly can, but realize that I also have to work to get what my needs met, which it might involve some sacrifices on your part. So the fact that, that these two are always present and, and always both somewhat at odds with each other and kind of straining um, means that to some extent everybody has a bit of a rough time in negotiation because uh, if the orientation approach is to be uh, believed and, and you know it has been validated in different ways, we we do have our leanings, uh, internal leanings, psychological leanings towards acting in one way or another. So uh, each of us is going to need to intentionally, uh, uh, you know, at least grab a, a handhold onto the non-natural style for them and, and get their hands around and their heads around. Uh, doing if somebody is, is naturally competitive, then, then they're going to have to work, you know, with, 
with the head, with words, with, with their actions, to be collaborative, because that's not going to come. Now. Well, that's, that's right, I mean, but it's also context specific. In uh -huh. other words, some people are much more likely to be competitive in uh, a workplace mm -hmm. uh, negotiation mm -hmm. than in a family negotiation, where they're more likely to be cooperative. And other people are actually the reverse. Mm -hmm. you know, they can be very competitive at, at home and go out in the workplace and be meek. So again, I don't think it's quite accurate to say that what a style is is universal. It is yeah, context no, no, dependent, no, no. it is relationship dependent, it is feedback dependent. There are a lot of people I can think of who negotiate by starting out by being extremely competitive, making a complete, extremely competitive statement. Mm -hmm. uh, but then when the door is open for a different style, they'll walk right through yeah. it. And uh, in general, I think the most effective negotiators are the ones who can have a multiplicity of styles, who can have a differential approach depending on the circumstance, and who can be reflective. Right, About because that, that needs to come from, from the mind, yeah. as opposed to, you know, I walk through the door and I do X because that's my style, or I walk through the door and I do X, but if someone opens a different door for me than I do Y, now you're talking about a lot of uh, intentionality in, in, in choosing, so what approach do I need to take now? Yeah, that's right. And I, I would, I'd like to say one other thing, too, about this. This isn't about being nice or nasty. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. a cooperative style isn't necessarily nice, oh, no. and a competitive style isn't necessarily nasty. Yeah. You can be very nice and very competitive, and you can be taking actually a cooperative style and not be so nice about right. it. And that, that gets confused so often uh, in our literature, in our field, in the way people feel about it, feel about it mm -hmm. or picture mm -hmm. sense. The other thing it's not about is being powerful or, or impotent. Right. It is about being effective and sometimes being very cooperative, really figuring out how I can meet your needs, working together with you is very powerful. Sure. And people who are effective at doing that are often extremely powerful negotiators. So we have some uh, research that's been done that shows that uh, competitive negotiators do not do better than cooperative negotiators. Uh, in, in, as long, what, what really is a determining factor is their skill level. Right. right. And maybe that's very important to set out really at an early stage in, in a course is that even though each, it, so, so much as this is a debate in the field, each side of the debate is competition better, is, co is, is, is uh, collaboration better, uh, each side likes to look at the other side and say, well, you know, they don't do as well as we do. Um, and and right, it I, I doesn't will, really bear that out. No, I, and I always think of a mediation I once did, a labor management mediation, where the guy who was ahead of one side of the bargaining said, well, we were interest facing at them, but they just positioned back at us. Yeah. It was like, you know, the idea is I'm going to be competitive about how cooperative I can be. Right. Although, I, th I think, by the way, that if you think back, uh, on, on situations you've been in, I'm, I'm sure you could come up with situations in which, in adopting a cooperative strategy, some of the things you had to do were pretty competitive. Exactly. In other words, you might have had to twist the other guy's arm into cooperating. Oh, I think a very common challenge, you see this all the time, is to say, open the door, I want to work with you about it. However, I also am prepared to you know, defend and advocate my interests, my yeah. company's interests, my country's interests, whatever it might be. It is how do you deliver both those messages? Mm -hmm. And you are all, and, and, and my belief actually is we're always delivering both those messages. Yeah. You know, even in what appears to be a com very competitive statement, there often is a cooperative element in there and vice versa. And the trick in negotiation is both to know how to, to put them both in there so yeah. they're both effective, but even more so to hear them in the other person. Right. So when you come at me and you say something that I want to punch you in the mouth for because it sounds so hostile and so competitive, I can also hear the cooperative edge to it and I can nurture that in some way. Right, and if we could reframe the conversation towards, at least from your point of view in this situation, if you could reframe the conversation away from that competitive threat into that cooperative kind of olive branch that you've seen in what I've said, you might be able to change the conversation completely. Right. And it's very hard to do that, yeah. which is one of the reasons people need mediators sometimes. 
Yeah. That is one of the roles I think media does help, is to help people kind of titrate that or deliver those messages in a more nuanced way. But we do this all the time, and the more effective we are uh, in both delivering a, co a genuinely cooperative <coughs> message, but also being clear that there is uh, consequences to, that we are willing to impose, or at least alternatives we're willing to pursue if we're not yeah. met in a similar spirit. Uh, you know, th that's what makes us successful. Yeah, so the bottom line is not either this is better or that is better, or not kind of go with your instinct. Or go. It's that both of these are important and you, and, and you need to improve in both of them because you will be using both of them and you add, you'll be using both of them simultaneously. Well, you'll be integrating. In I think the, 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 way, the way really, if you watch really skilled negotiators, uh -huh. they integrate. Yeah. Then, you know, they're not, you know, with not the Hollywood image yeah. of, you know, make my day kind yeah. of negotiation. Mm -hmm. It is really about how do you pose a real concern or a real issue powerfully opening the door to work together, being clear that there are limits for both of us on being able yeah. to just cooperate, that there are other that there is a competitive element, and being comfortable. Mm -hmm. Well, you certainly made my day, <laughs> Thanks a lot. <laughs>